So let's look in the book of Genesis. Old man, new man. An old nature, new nature. So look in the book of Genesis. That's where we have to start with this. Now, I know you guys know what happened in Genesis. The fall, the original sin. And death came first in spiritually. We know that. And that's why Adam and his wife, they go hide themselves, uh, try to dress themselves, and, and God's voice is seeking them in the garden. All right. Now, if you'll notice in the, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, we've got the serpent Adam and Eve playing the blame game. Right? This isn't going to uh, go anywhere. But <laughs> judgment comes. There is a purpose in why I'm bringing this out. Um, we obviously have a fallen nature now. You see? Because they're hiding themselves from God. And the promised, um, the promised judgment came. But it came sp spiritually first. See, there's not communion now. And so um, that is why uh, we have uh, this separation in communion because sin has now entered in. Okay, so let's look in Genesis. Are we clear about that? Genesis chapter 3 now. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Here's the key word. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So we have now started the seed of faith, of course. But the, the idea of thy seed, her seed. And remember that Eve was the mother of all living. Okay? Okay. All right. And he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, I'm not going to read to you the rest of the, con of the condemnation, of the rest of the judgment. This is important that we understand this enmity. There was not enmity before, but there's enmity now. Now, I, I'm going to have to tell you that Adam was an extraordinary creature. God gave him dominion over all the earth. And whatever he said it was, genealogy, that's what it was. Okay? So, um, that enmity is, is the result of this fall. And when we talk about the old nature, we're talking about what we theologians like to call the Adamic nature. Or it's called the old nature or the old man. Those terms all apply to this fallen nature due to the original sin. Now, I want to, I'm going to use a, a, a verse that uh, stays in conjunction with that idea of enmity, new nature, old nature. Look in the book of Ephesians for just a moment. The book of Ephesians chapter 2. The book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And let's look, and you know this book is about Christ and his church, um, the benefit of uh, grace. It has been done, uh, and we get that very, very deep verse, I think, which is the key to this book, really I do, uh, in, in verse, um, oh, verses 9 through 11, really. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensations to come, um, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together all in one things in Christ, both which are in heaven and are on earth, even in him. Now that's the, th that's the third time about the body of Christ described as heaven and in earth. 
Um, and in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Uh, that you can just, that has sovereignty written all over it. And that has to do with God's complete work of grace in his church throughout all the ages. Okay, now let's look in chapter 2 and in verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2 and in verse 14. For he is, and it ought to read this way, for he is our peace offering, who hath made both Jew, Gentile. Paul's dealing with that in the Ephesus area at that time. Uh, hath made both one Jew Gentile and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Now that is the key here of understanding the old nature and the new nature. Okay. And notice here, having abolished in his flesh, that's why Jesus Christ had to come in the flesh, uh, laid upon him is this disobedient act, is this inherent nature. Now understand the difference between the two. One is Romans 5, one is Romans 6. The disobedient act is from Adam, straight from Adam to us. And the inherent sin nature is from Adam through all of our grandfathers to you and I to our children. You never have to take a child by the hand and teach them how to disobey and sin. Somehow that comes with the package. Okay? And that is due to this um, enmity. That's due to this inherent sin nature. That's the old nature or the old man. And it goes on to say, uh, enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances to make in himself of two, Jew Gentile, one new man. And you'll see in your annotation, in your notes, there's a, a number before the word new man in verse 15. And it goes down to verse 2. Um, it is, uh, and this is concerning the sense of the church. This is, con this is concerning the sense of the church. And um, because that is the subject of this particular book. It's Christ is church. He's the head of the church. We are members of his members uh, and so forth. All right. So the Jew and the Gentile are, that are saved by grace through faith is the one new man. So making peace. Now, that's an important word. There's the peace of God as an attribute. There's the peace with God. And there is the peace of God for those that are in Christ Jesus. Like Paul said, that the peace of God that passeth all understanding may garrish in your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, as it says in Colossians, let the peace of God umpire in your hearts. So uh, it is that peace that's mentioned in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, and so forth. Here, this is the peace treaty with God. Christ is the Old Testament peace offering uh, fulfilled in him. Um, and look in verse 16. And that he might reconcile. That word reconcile means to change thoroughly. So this doctrine embraces the other doctrines. That's how you know a doctrine's true or not, by the way. It must be congruent and conducive to all the other doctrines. It can't be opposed to another doctrine, then you got false doctrine. Okay, just a, that, that was extra. That won't cost you anything. Okay. So now notice, if you will, please. And that he might reconcile both. Jew, Gentile, unto God, one body, the mystical union of believers, by the cross, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. 
and came and preached peace to you who were far off, that's the Gentile, and to them that are near, that's the Jew. For both, for through him, we both, Jew, Gentile, have access, gracious invitation, by one spirit unto the Father. Okay, now, I chose this book because now this has to do of the view of the mystical union of believers, the body. Now, we have this same doctrine brought forth concerning the individual. And that's in chapter 4. Chapter 4. And it says in chapter 4, verse 17 of Ephesians. Ephesians 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye walk, not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Um, obviously, this book is a book who, who bears um, as one of its uh, practical um, uh, 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 um, undersubjects is the walk of the believer. There's the walking, the walking dead in chapter 2. You see, uh, um, walking and trespasses and sin. Uh, there's the walk of those that are his poema, who are producing good works which he foreordained them to do. We're, we're, we're taught how to walk in the book of Ephesians. Now, this is the walk of the Gentile or the one who's not saved. And he walks not as other Gentiles walk in the emptiness of their mind. If you want a good definition of what's empty in this life, go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. All is vanity. Vanity, saith the preacher. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we move forward. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. So we see that there's the learning of Christ that is at the center of this issue. Now, verse 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus... That Now, whenever we talk about the new nature, old nature, we are looking at responsibility. We are responsible. Now, what this also points to is the power to do so. And that's accomplished by the Holy Spirit. And we'll see that in chapter 3. The Holy Spirit strengthens this new nature. So um, this new nature, by the way, is not Christ because he can't be created. Uh, this new nature is that entity as a result of being born again. So in verse 22, that she put off concerning the former manner of life the old man. Now notice what, how this is defined. Uh, whenever, we, um, whenever we are looking at scripture, we want to note not only what is written, but how it's written. And notice uh, when we talk about the, the uh, old man, we're talking about the former manner of life. That life of the unregenerate. You, you, you connect 22 with 17 through 19. And that's what, that's what that is. Okay, we're going to have to reconnect here in a minute. Um, and notice, if you will please, um, what, how it is defined, the old nature. The old nature is the following. Corrupt according to deceitful lusts. <laughs> Corruption, uh, that which is ruined, and it's very much like the word perishing. Uh, that's a state. This is a status. Um, that which is ruined from its original purpose. Um, 
Uh, we're told about that in Galatians. If you sow to the flesh, you reap what? Corruption. You, you reach death. Corruption. Right. And that's that same word, that which is corrupt. Um, that which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Uh, Adam and Eve thought that they could eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and be as gods. They were deceived. Um, and that is an element of every sin. One is rebellion, and that's pride. And two is deception. Yes, I can hold hands here and hold hands here, and it doesn't make any difference. No, be not deceived. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Don't be deceived. And deception <coughs> comes with sin. Okay. Um, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, that's a whole other message. But we know that we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, the book of Philippians says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So um, that mind, the mind of Christ, um, is, is brought forth in this new entity, this new nature. Um, and it, is, it has the ability to be renewed. And this renewal is not salvation. Some make it that. It is not, or it should have to be saved every day. Um, it's the renewal that we find in, not in, in um, Titus 3, but we find in 2 Corinthians 4 to be renewed um, daily, to be renewed day by day. That's the renewal we're talking about here. And it says, and that she put on. Notice the responsibility is on the believer. You're to put it on. That she put on. So in verse 22, that she put off concerning the former manner of life. That she put on the new man, which after God, now, we have another is. Mark that is. Now we're going to get a definition and or description. Um, is created. So you see, it's not Christ. Mm -hmm. The indwelling Christ is a different doctrine and aspect. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is not created. Okay, so don't make that mistake. Schofield does. It's wrong. <laughs> That's one of the wrong notes he, he makes. Um, Jesus Christ can't be created. He's the creator. It's created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, if you want the commentary on that, you go to Romans chapter 6. Uh, where we see connected directly with spiritual baptism. That we're to yield our members as instruments of righteousness and holiness unto God. Um, that's where Roy meets Paul in Rome. Mm -hmm. Reckon, obey, yield. Um, now, let's notice, okay, so I'm going to leave that there. Now, the practical outworking is the following verses. Now, to appreciate how this actually works, we have Ephesians chapter 3 where we see the relationship of the Holy Spirit with this new nature. And it says in Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 16, this is part of one of those three prayers of Paul. Mm -hmm. And it says that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit, where? In the inner man. Um, so notice, if you will, what for what purpose? That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ which passeth uh, to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that she might be filled with all the completeness of God. So that is 
uh, the power of the Holy Spirit strengthening the inner or new man. Now, let's look further at a further description of this uh, concerning salvation itself. Look in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Now, this is on a question from Timothy at Cayman Cooley, the old or the new nature. So let's look at where that uh, begins. And if you'll look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And Ephesians <coughs> helps us with that. For all, and also the book of Romans chapter 3. Uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Um, and this idea uh, that all have sinned uh, carries through here as well. Uh, and we're, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they who live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again. Wherefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So we just read about that here earlier. Uh, about created in righteousness and true holiness. That's this new entity. And it dwells within the believer. And it is strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And it is created in the image of Christ Jesus. Uh, the full manifestation and, and direct representation. We'll see that in a moment in the book of Colossians as I haven't much time to teach. Waiting on everybody. But now notice, if you will, Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now verse 18. All things, and all things are of God who hath changed us thoroughly to himself, that's God the Father, by Christ Jesus, and hath given us the ministry of changing thoroughly, reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are the ambassadors for Christ. <clears throat> so when we talk about, uh, we also have to look at this facet of ministry that we are given. Okay, now let's look in the book of Colossians as I'm going to have to end here quickly. Uh, these are the main passages uh, that we would want to look at. In this section... And in this book, uh, what's revealed to us, the mystery revealed to us, is um, the indwelling Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And the theme of the book is the, the uh, preeminence of the head of the body, Jesus Christ. In this section, chapter 2, we're talking about uh, the effects and what should result concerning... Now I lost them. Because there's more than one on there. Yeah. Well, it's almost done. I know. Well, they, they, they waste time. This guy not won't up. answer. 9.57. It makes it... Yeah, I can see the time, honey. I see it. Why not? Okay. I already ran the water through and sprayed the place down. Okay. Well, see, see, see. Huh? <laughs> okay.
Tim Collins. I probably won't get. You ain't get your, get your basket. Come on. Why does this take so long? Get a big one. Thank you. Oh, we got the young ones here. All right. Well, okay. Fun. James, you with me? Yeah, yes, I am, Pastor. Okay. Yeah. I think we've lost Diana due to data. So I'm going to go ahead. By the way, I've been trying to call Emma the whole time. All right. Colossians uh, chapter uh, through 2, and we will move into chapter 3. But explain to us uh, at this time is uh, the result of the co-death, co-burial, co-resurrection, which really begins in chapter 9 through 13 and sets up the rest of it here, that we're complete in the Godhead bodily. Now we come to chapter 3, and it says, Since she then be risen with Christ, co-resurrection, seek those things which are above, and of course that's what this book's about, above, Above all things, the preeminence of Christ. Mm -hmm. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above. There's that word again. Yeah. Not on things on the earth. For you are dead, co-burial. And your life is hidden with Christ and God, co-resurrection. When Christ, our life, shall appear, then shall ye appear with him in glory. What I like about this is it designates the indwelling Christ and then tells you about the new nature. All right. So um, let's look in verse 5. Have a funeral, therefore. That's mortify. Mortician. Where we get the name mortician. <laughs> Have a funeral, therefore, for your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil desire, and covetousness. And boy, we've seen enough of that, haven't we? Uh, which is idolatry. For which sa things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the sons of disobedience. In the which ye also once walked when ye lived in them. But now he also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that she put off the old man. Who's that? Adamic nature. Mm -hmm. With his deeds, mm -hmm. which have just been listed. And you have put on. There's the responsibility. Put off, put on. Now, you want to add Romans 13 to this as well. And I'll read it in just a minute. We're going to go over for just a minute or two. Um, and have put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So let's look at that language, uh, how it's clearly defined. It's after the nature of Christ. It's not Christ himself. Okay. So what does image mean? Well, we have studied that many times. Direct representation, full, full manifestation. That's where we get the idea of Christ likeness from. Now this put on, put off continues. Uh, you get down here in verse 12. Put on, therefore, is the elect of God, holy, beloved, tender mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, uh, forbearing one another, uh, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye, and above all these, preeminently, above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of maturity. Okay, one more passage for now. And by the way, you would want to include 2 Peter 1 to add to your faith virtue. And that is working through the new nature. Um, uh, now, uh, uh, um, Romans, I almost forgot where I was going. Romans chapter 13. Um, look in verse, um, really you need to read all of this uh, from 8 on, but I'm going to just bring it up to verse 12. Romans 13, 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off 
the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. That put off, put on. That's old nature, new nature. And then in, in verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in reveling, drunkenness, and morality's wantonness, not in strife and envying. Really, that, that almost takes us back to Ephesians chapter 4. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Okay, so we, uh, we are... Uh, that's the responsibility of the believer. All right, so these would be the main passages concerning the old nature, new nature. I would advise when teaching this that you end with Romans 6. Um, and uh, the idea of reckon, obey, and yield is really the, uh, the way or the work of this new nature versus the old nature through the baptism that is the immersion into Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, we're to walk in the newness of resurrection life. Okay, sir, I'm going to have to end the teaching for today as I have recorded it.